This video, which is dedicated to the late Geoffrey Booth, marks the passing 50 years ago of the last Cardiff tram in 1950 and 30 years ago of the last trolleybus in 1970. Once renowned for having one of the most prosperous and compact tramways in the country, the replacing trolleybuses were at first equally successful. Because of the preponderance of low bridges, all the city's totally enclosed double-decker trams and trolleybuses had to be of low bridge designs. In Cardiff, coal was king, so by 1913 the city had expanded to become the largest coal exporting port in the world. To serve the growing population, horse tram services were provided by two companies. The largest, the Cardiff Tramways Company, opened lines between 1872 and 1886, whilst the Cardiff District and Panath built just one line in 1881. Their depot in Clive Street is still standing. Another relic of the horse era also survives. After spending 65 years as a tea bar in Cardiff docks, one of the tramway's company low bridge trams has been beautifully restored. For several years it was displayed at the Welsh Industrial and Maritime Museum, but as of September 2000 it is not accessible to the public. This was one of 52 tramway's company cars taken over by the corporation in January 1902. Interestingly, the smaller Panath undertaking remained independent until February 1903. Following the takeover, the horse routes would be swiftly electrified and extended, and by 1904, 130 new passenger cars were in service. The double-decker fleet consisted of 100 uncanopied open toppers, of which 80 were built in the Electric Railway and Tramway Carriage Works at Preston in 1902. These included 40 52-seaters on Brill 21E trucks, costing £450. Also 40 68-seaters riding on Brill 22E maximum traction bogies, costing £650. The remaining 20 double-deckers delivered in 1903 again had Brill trucks but brush-built bodies. 30 bogey single-deckers were needed for the Salisbury Road and Grangetown splot routes. The first batch were built at Preston in 1902 and rode on Brill 22E maximum traction bogies. As did the second batch delivered in 1903-04, but these were Milnes built combination cars. In the early 20s, just over 20 trams were upgraded. Then in 1923, Cardiff took delivery of the first of a revolutionary design of low bridge car. Eventually, 81 of these modern brush-built trams entered service. To pass under 15-foot bridges, they had well-type underframes and small wheels and motors. All were given numbers vacated by scrapped cars. Brush also supplied a modern single-decker in 1926. Mounted on Peckham P25 bogies, it was the forerunner of a further 30 similar maximum traction cars needed for routes 1 and 7. By 1929, the flourishing system had achieved its maximum extent at just over 19.5 route miles. Then the trams fell from favour. A planned extension to Ely was dropped and low-height buses replaced the Salisbury Road route in 1930. Single-decker operation came to an end with the replacement of the 7 in October 1936, although after nearly four years in store, the 1926 brush cars were sold to Brazil, where they ran on the para-electric railway system until 1947. 
Following closure of the seven, the tracks shown in green were abandoned, whilst those in orange were retained for diversions and emergencies. Overriding both the general manager and the transport committee, the city council voted in May 1939 to use trolleybuses to replace the trams instead of buses. However, owing to wartime restrictions, the trams on the first section of Route 6 from Clarence Road to Wood Street could not be replaced until St David's Day 1942. Then on November the 8th, trolleybuses also took over on the northern section to Clandav Fields. The purple line indicates the completed route, including depot-only wiring. The first ten vehicles had three-axle AEC 6641T chassis with 7 foot 6 wide Northern Counties bodies. These 70-seaters were of a special low-height design and because of the possibility of flooding, the chassis were designed to pass through 6 to 8 inches of water in safety. For a short period after the war, some trolleybuses sported an attractive streamlined livery. To supplement the 81 modern cars, some seven or eight upgraded open toppers survived until March 1946, usually being employed as PCAR extras, the last pair being numbers 22 and 84. The profitable Butte Street route was replaced in April 1946. In the morning peak, scores of trams had come to the docks from all corners of the city, but after 8am the service ran to and from the city only. When trolleybuses took over on August the 17th, the 16 was in the hands of these elderly English electric-built vehicles acquired from Pontypridd. Nicknamed Doodlebugs, they dated from 1930. Next to go were the tram route serving Canton. Here the track was so bad, a 10 mile an hour speed restriction was in force at Victoria Park. The trams were phased out between January and June 1948, the replacing trolleybuses being numbers 5, 5A and 5B. Now trams would no longer cross Cardiff Bridge. To work the fives, 10 BUT 9641Ts were acquired. Built with the flat fare system in mind, these 8 foot wide 67 seater buses were jointly designed by the corporation and East Lancashire coach builders. The penny flat fare system had been introduced with the arrival of the first trolleybuses in 1942. Conductors now usually occupied a seat on the near side of the rear entrance, close to the coin box. The low height bodies had a front staircase and a forward exit, the sliding door being operated by the driver. The flat fare principle extended to the trams in March 1943 and the buses by January 1944. Next to go were the twos along Newport Road, replaced by buses on the 17th of October 1948. However, the tracks were needed to reach Roth Depot. Now, just over 40 cars remained for routes 1 and 4. On the 27th of March 1949, a group of enthusiasts visited Cardiff. This is an AEC Regal. Using car 88, they explored the remaining tram routes. 88 had been cosmetically restored with a view to possible preservation, but there were no takers. Fortunately, water car number 131 of 1902 was preserved in its 1913 condition. Although not on view to the public, it forms part of today's National Tramway Museum collection.
To allow double-decker trolleybuses to pass beneath the Queen Street bridges, the roadway had to be lowered. So as from the 12th of July 1949, the trams were rerouted by way of Adams Street and Butte Terrace, the tracks in orange being abandoned. Trams no longer rang the length of St Mary Street or in front of the castle. Then, as and from the 4th of December 1949, trolleybuses replaced the fours to Roth Park. In this rare scene, a replacement trolleybus turns from Churchill Way into Butte Terrace, following the original wiring used for inbound trolleybuses from the East End until following protests from disgruntled traders on Queen Street, they were rerouted via Working Street in early 1951. However, this wiring remained in situ for many years. After paralleling the surviving tram route along City Road, the Roth Park trolleybuses turned here into Albany Road. Roth Depot, which dated from electrification, now housed about 20 active trams. The scrap sidings were on the west side of the building. This car is leaving the depot and pulling out onto Newport Road. For some years after the war, many roads in Britain were in poor shape. Approached through four arches, the depot could house 100 trams on 12 tracks. By early 1950, only lanes 1 to 6 still housed service cars. 7 to 9 were tarred over, and 10 to 12 held vehicles awaiting scrap. This next sequence follows the final tram route from Gabalva into St Mary Street, negotiating the trolley reverser at Whitchurch Road terminus. The replacing trolleybuses were extended a short distance to turn by means of the roundabout in the background, but in an anti-clockwise direction. By the end, the passing loop at Maitland Street was the only one on the system. Movements had once been controlled by signals, but latterly these had fallen into disuse. Following a derailment in October 1948, the roadway on the north side had been patched up. Cruis Road. This was one of several cars to retain its wartime grey livery. This was the former junction with the Roth Park route, worked by trolleybuses since December. City Road. This was the 
busy intersection where until the 11th of July 1949 the trams had turned west towards the main shopping and commercial parts of the city. Now they snaked over the junction into Glossop Road onto tracks which had seen no regular service since 1940. Further on was the former junction for the Splot and Adamsdown Square routes. Virtually new rails along Adam Street and Butte Terrace have been retained purely for emergencies since 1936. As most Cardiff track had suffered from years of neglect, passengers were delighted to be suddenly offered a smooth ride into town. The journey time was also quicker as the trams no longer had to battle through the congested central area. the trolley is forced hard down to pass under the former Rumney Railway branch into the docks. Open top cars have been banned from this route for fear passengers might come into contact with the overhead. A little closer to town and cars pass under the low bridge carrying the former Taff Vale Railway to both the docks and Cardiff General. These next scenes were taken on the approach to the Butte Monument. First, the junction with Butte Street. Next, Customs House Street. Then, various cars cross over the Glamorgan Canal. the sweeping curve past the monument to terminate in St Mary Street, the city's principal thoroughfare. A choice phase drivers returning from Whitchurch Road to the depot. They could either use a connecting curve on the south side of a traffic island or reverse in Glossop Road. The crew off 113 have opted for the latter. This involved altering the points to take the car onto the Royal Infirmary curve, which connected with the city-bound track on Newport Road. This curve, laid as part of a proposed express route to the docks, was also used by trams working back to the depot from the city. Following a few yards of wrong line running, the crossover took them back onto the correct side of Newport Road. One One Three was one of the first batch of brush cars to be delivered during the winter of 1923-4.
Roth Court, where the tracks have been doubled in the mid-1930s. Arriving at the depot. The somewhat restricted track layout involved cars making shunting movements to reach certain parts of the building. These operations taking place in the middle of the main road to Newport. Riding out now from town. A feisty turn of speed took the trams along Butte Terrace and Adams Street. Although the doomed cars looked decidedly weary, on good track they still offered, as one local newspaper proclaimed, the best ride in town. This scene clearly shows the dip under Adams Street Bridge. the former junction with Moira Place. This was the length of track which had lain fallow for nearly 20 years. Regular tramway operation ceased on Sunday the 19th of February 1950, trolley buses on Route 1 taking over the next day. These scenes were filmed at Whitchurch Road Terminus on the final day of tramway operation. Throughout Monday the 20th, car 11, suitably decorated, ploughed a lonely furrow between the city and Whitchurch Road. Listening in the winter sun, one of the new dual door trolley buses glides up to the stop. From now on, this terminus would be known as Gabalva. Number 11 carried two banners inscribed with suitable poetic sentiments. The words on one side were also reputedly used on the last tram in Halifax, Nova Scotia. To all you old timers and you still in your teens who drove with me through peace and war packed in just like sardines, I'd like to thank you one and all for the patience you have shown and say farewell to the finest folk a tram has ever known. People did indeed pack in like sardines all day. Special threepenny souvenir tickets were issued. Today these are treasured possessions. There now follow some extremely rare colour film taken at Whitchurch Road. Car 11 formed part of the final group of brush cars and had entered service in October 1925.
After working most of the day, Eleven was then taken back to the depot. Here it runs on the wrong side of the road at the City Road, Newport Road Junction. the depot, it squeezed under the Roth branch of the Taffdale Railway. By the evening, demand was so high, 112 was brought out as a relief car. All too soon, it would be over. Its lights blazing defiantly, number 11 would take over an hour to make the two and a half mile journey back to the depot. The Lord Mayor declared, the last bell has rung, the last ticket issued, and we can only hope the modern successors serve us with as fine a record as the departed. Deliveries of further new trolleybuses continued during 1949-50. To speed things up, the frames for 245 and 251 to 274 were built by East Lancashire but completed locally by Bruce Coachworks, making them the only trolleybuses to be assembled in Wales. Five eight-foot-wide, 38-seaters saw off the ancient doodle bugs in 1949. 238 to 242 had identical BUT chassis to the latest double-deckers, together with scaled-down versions of their East Lancashire bodies. Although miles of trolleybus extensions had been authorised, the system remained fairly compact. However, a short extension to Pengam was opened on October the 15th, served by the 2 and 2A. Clare Road Depot was closed when all trolleybus operations were transferred to Roth in October 1953. Today, the century-old building services vehicles belonging to the city's public works department. Having started with trams, it housed the first trolleybuses in 1942, lost its tram allocation in August 1946, but continued as a scrap site for some time after. Following the introduction of three cross-town routes in October 1951, all of which used existing wiring, the only subsequent extensions opened in May 1955 were built to serve the Ely housing estates. The city's last double-deckers, delivered early in 1955, were BUT 9641Ts with conventional rear-door 72-seater East Lancashire bodies. Britain's very last new three-axle trolleybus was BUT number 243, delivered on the 15th of April 1955. Now the fleet consisted of 79 vehicles, including the six single-deckers for Butte Street. Overall mileage had reached 18.1 miles. At just over a mile in length, the 16 was one of the shortest but busiest trolleybus routes in Britain. Until 1946, workers had travelled to Tiger Bay in a non-stop procession of packed trams. However, with double-deck trolleybuses unable to pass under Butte Street Bridge, the low-capacity single-deckers had problems shifting the crowds. So on some rush hour journeys, two conductors were needed, and at both termini, tickets were also issued in advance by additional conductors.
Overlooked by the old merchant's exchange, the doodlebugs use this Y in order to reverse. First drivers nudged into Stewart Street prior to edging back into Butte Crescent, the manoeuvre being monitored by the conductor. From here they ran forward to load up for the brief run into the city. For many years, thousands travelled to Pierhead by tram and later by trolleybus to board one of the much-loved Campbell steamers for a sail across the Bristol Channel to Bristol or Weston or perhaps further afield to Ilfracombe and Clevedon. The docks were still thriving, offering passengers a fascinating parade of tugs and other vessels. One of the Campbell veterans was this Scottish-built paddler, Glen Usk, delivered in 1914. Except for serving as a minesweeper during both world wars, she spent all her working life crisscrossing the Bristol Channel and was a firm Cardiff favourite. Following her withdrawal in 1961, she was laid up until sent for scrap two years later. As Glen Usk approaches Pier Head, a trolley bus can be glimpsed in the background in these late 1950s sequences. Despite opening as late as 1942 and building a new extension in 1955, Doubts over the long-term viability of the trolley buses have been simmering for some years. Matters came to a head in 1961 with the need to replace some of the original AECs. In a detailed report, J.F. Siddle, the general manager, listed some of the disadvantages associated with the trolley bus. Lack of mobility due to fixed overhead, which was also costly to maintain. Disruption caused by power failures and broken wires cost of electrical energy now higher than diesel oil, rate charges on fixed installations and substations, high cost of building extensions, Ely had cost £11,000 a mile in 1955, and finally, the dwindling availability of new vehicles. On the credit side, he stated trolleybuses consumed home-produced fuel, created no fumes, were silent in operation, required less maintenance, and lasted longer than a motor bus. However, Siddle recommended that the trolley buses should be phased out over a period of eight to ten years. This was a time when electric street traction had few friends, and the abandonment was ratified by the City Council on the 6th of November, 1961. Turning off Queen Street to follow the one-way wiring leading to the monument. Cardiff Bridge. Although threatened with extinction, many alterations did take place to the overhead during the next eight years. For example, on the 7th of May 1961, a new loop came into force at Cabalva. This provided a rare instance of property being demolished to create a turning point. As from the 1st of July 1962, the single-decker route would be renumbered 14. Originally, the corporation had wanted to close the five group of routes first, but circumstances dictated that the short Pengam section should be replaced by buses as from the 25th of November 1962. A couple of scenes of the 2A, which link Pengam to Victoria Park, 
mainly in the morning peak. Inbound to the city, the tools followed the length of unidirectional wiring along Working Street and Mill Lane. Introduced in December 1950, this brought them to the Butte Monument. After circling the monument, the tools loaded in St Mary Street, prior to heading up to Castle Street Junction for the two and three quarter mile run back to Pengam. From Castle Street Junction, the twos will work in tandem with the ones, threes, fours and nines to City Road and the eights as far as Royal Oak. Overlooked by the former Tramways Department power station demolished in 1974, twos are seen crossing the bridge over the Great Western Main Line. Just over a third of a mile of route was actually abandoned. This closure meant that Pengam Housing Estate was served by trolleybuses for just over 12 years. The conversion had been brought forward to allow work to begin on Rover Way, a new access road to the docks, and also on a new car plant to be built on the site of the old Cardiff Airport. Initially, vehicles heading from Pengam to the depot used battery power for their final approach. Later, however, by switching to the outbound wiring, they were able to reach the depot under power as seen here. The day following the Pengam closure, the overhead linesmen were busily cutting down the redundant wiring. The coal-fired power station would continue supplying current for the trolleybuses until 1970. One of the tower wagons involved, number two, was filmed during its last ever outing. Built by Commer in 1947, it was only the corporation's second purpose-built tower wagon. Up until 1942, they had relied upon converted buses. Number two was to be replaced by a new Bedford, which may well have been fitted with the tower off number two. Since April 1952, the later tower wagons have been equipped with two-way radio for emergencies. The call signs being car tow yoke and car tow zebra. Parked in the background nearby was tower wagon CKG 650, which was converted from bus number 83, a Bristol K6A. Six of the 1942 AECs were now withdrawn, one of which 201 was destined for preservation. However, when this vehicle was subsequently returned to traffic in March 1963, 203 was preserved instead. Two AECs were specially illuminated for the November 1962 shopping festival and for Christmas. Each carried a resplendent star mounted over the front destination box as well as a zigzag line of bulbs between the decks. The following year, all four remaining AECs would be found on illumination duty. Despite no fewer than eight trolleys being fitted with Christmas decorations in 1965, only four were turned out in the next two years. Because the eight-footers could not carry side decorations, the fiberglass discs from the AECs were repositioned at the front of the upper deck.
their frameworks of coloured lights fitted round either a star or a Father Christmas, these splendid vehicles were firm favourites with the Cardiff public. various times during 1963, road closures led to various curtailments and diversions. For example, when St Mary Street and Queen Street were closed, trolleybuses coming from the west on routes 4, 5, 6 and 8 terminated at Havelock Street. Routes from the eastern suburbs were cut back to the Dumfries Place Windsor Lane loop. Because the diverted trolleys entered the loop over little used wiring, this led to the inevitable dewarments. In the clockwise direction, the loop was the regular terminus for the five and for a handful of unadvertised short workings to Roth Park and Gabalva until July 1965. Fascinating workings occurred on the occasion of the annual Miners Gala Day Parade when trolleys from Thlandau Fields were rerouted via Lower Cathedral Road seen here. This involved lowering the poles to coast across Cowbridge Road where the overhead connections had been removed. With the poles raised again, a trail of sparks accompanied the vehicles on their 200-yard journey along the truncated wiring, left in situ on Lower Cathedral Road since closure of Clare Road Depot in 1953. To replace the 14, Bus Route 2 was extended to the pierhead as from the 12th of January 1964. To mark the end of single-deck trolleybus operation in England and Wales, 243, the last three-axle trolley built, and the city's newest electric vehicle, was hired for an enthusiast tour. In the city, the single-deckers used a one-way loop. Here one turns from Haysbridge Road into Mill Lane, en route to the main loading point adjacent to the old Glamorgan Canal, which dated from the 1790s, but which by this time had fallen into disuse. For most of their run, the single-deckers paralleled the railway line serving the docks. This area, heavily bombed in May 1943, had once been dominated by mercantile and consular offices, shops and boarding houses, and no less than 31 exotically named pubs, equal to one every 56 yards. The second vehicle to arrive at Pier Head was 243, the last British-built three-axle trolleybus. A lingering look at the reversing Y. It is hard to imagine such manoeuvres being sanctioned today.
This once familiar area has now changed beyond all recognition. With demise of the doodlebugs, another aspect of Tiger Bay's unique character would be lost. Because any depot-bound vehicle carried passengers, for those in the know, it was possible to ride a single-decker all the way along Newport Road. Interestingly, two single-deckers did make peak hour appearances on the Monday after the closure, but the experiment was not repeated and all was subsequently laid up. On the Sunday, work started immediately on severing the overhead. One of the new Leyland PD-3s passes on the extended route too. The facades of some of these elegant buildings still survive today. Nine one one BUH was one of two Bedford tower wagons purchased in 1962-3. With the wires starting to tumble, it is worth mentioning that Cardiff had been most unusual in making its own frogs, crossings, runner bars, twin line hangers, and pole finials. Despite the rundown, these would continue to be produced in the workshops until 1967. The department also designed its own special insulated runner for its own type of electric frog. Much of the inspiration for this work came from Felix Canuda, the deputy general manager and a lifelong electric traction enthusiast. He had also designed this wire winding trailer, which was powered by a battery. So it could be towed by either tower wagon, the number plate was reversible. The overhead line superintendent, Jack Rich, clocked up 50 years of corporation service. Further changes at Tiger Bay. Not long after the demise of the 14, the wiring used by the 6 and 9s was reversed. Up until the 6th of April 1964, they had reached Pierhead via Stewart Street and departed via James Street. Following a period of reconstruction, this new reversed flow came into force on the 21st of September. The last four 1942 AECs went for scrap in June 1965. When the fives were withdrawn, only the loops at Windsor Lane and Beda Road were abandoned. Operating only at peak hours, the 5A and 5B, which linked the city to Victoria Park, last ran on the 22nd of July 1965. A 5 heads for Windsor Lane to take up service. Crossing Cardiff Bridge. Seen here on an enthusiast tour, the little used Beda Road loop was about a mile from Castle Junction and half a mile from Victoria Park. A continuing decline in passenger loadings meant the corporation could withdraw the fives without any direct bus replacement. To allow Queen Street to become fully one way, eastbound trolleybuses were rerouted to run along new unidirectional wiring along Cate's Park Road. 
This new wiring erected by Messrs. Clough Smith, who had built the first trolleybus route in 1942, came into force on the 31st of October, 1965. Now, for the first time, passengers could enjoy the splendours of the picturesque City Hall and the National Museum of Wales. Cardiff's next closure came out of the blue. At midnight on the 16th of December 1965, a weight restriction of 13 tonnes was placed on Wood Street Bridge. This meant that as from the 17th, shuttle buses connected at the station with trolleybuses still working on the northern portions of the 6 and 9. These scenes taken on New Year's Day 1966 show the truncated services using the loop round the central bus station. to happier days, with views of through-running sixes and nines at the intermediate timing point on Wood Street, crossing the offending bridge spanning the Taff River. Over the Taff again, this time on Clarence Bridge. Carrying a five mile an hour speed restriction for trolleybuses, this magnificent swing bridge dated from 1890. In tram days, it had carried interlaced track. It would eventually be replaced by a new bridge opened by Jim Callahan in 1976. On the 20th of March, 1966, schoolboy Mike Russell organized a memorable tour of Cardiff. The higher charge was five pound two shillings the fare, seven shillings. Lasting for some five hours, 222 covered existing routes as well as miles of dormant wiring. For example, several trips were made across Clarence Bridge, which had not seen a trolleybus for over three months. On one journey, the 1948 BUT became the last trolleybus to peer ahead when it cautiously negotiated the one-way terminal loop. From now on, no more trolleys would venture into Tiger Bay. Evelyn Street. The centre span of this bridge could swing through 90 degrees, a job once done by four men in five minutes. When running from end to end, the sixes had crossed the tap no less than three times. Returning from Flandav Fields, 222 had to be manhandled over Cowbridge Road so it could connect with the severed wires on Lower Cathedral Road. After yet another crossing of the TAF, the original 1942 loop at Hunter Street was used for the last time. Retained for emergencies and situated in the heart of Dockland, this wiring had been superseded when the 6 was extended to Pier Head in August 1947. Although use of the front exit had ceased about 1954, 222 was the only vehicle whose front door had not been panelled over 12 years later. For the historic crossing of Wood Street Bridge, all participants alighted so the driver could edge the empty trolleybus slowly over the weakened structure. 
Interestingly, the bridge would not be replaced for another couple of years. One of those on board 222 was the engineer and rolling stock superintendent Felix Canuda, who had come to Cardiff in 1945. Another of his many innovations was a less costly, lightweight, horizontal, swivelling trolley head, which reduced dewormants. Through bus service to Tiger Bay was restored when the northern sections of the 6 and 9 were replaced as from the 17th of April 1966. An outbound 6 turns west at Castle Street Junction. Problems outside the Angel Hotel. Activity at the busy junction of Cowbridge Road and Cathedral Road. The attractive loop had planned our fields in the days when the Sixes followed a U-shaped course through the city centre en route to Tiger Bay, a distance of some three and a half miles. The Six had also been the first route to open in 1942. The Five Mile Nine dated from 1951. Until the sudden closure of the Wood Street Bridge, it had started at Cabalva, crossed through the city before joining the Six for the run down to Pier Head. Cruis Road. Turning from City Road into Newport Road. As Landau Fields was now served by just one trolleybus route, it was decided to replace the four as and from the 18th of September 1966. This attractive turning circle had been built on private ground. Following the abandonment, the redundant wiring at the junction with Cowbridge Road would be swiftly removed. Linking two parks, Landav and Roth, the four and a half mile four was another of the cross town routes introduced in 1951. By the end of 1966, roughly half the trolleybus fleet would be gone. During its dying days, no less than five visiting trolleys toured the system. The first being one of a batch of 35-foot-long Leyland-built BUTs with front entrance Burlingham bodies delivered to Glasgow as late as 1958. Having operated in its home city for the last time in March 1967, it toured Cardiff on the 3rd of September. Owned by the British Trolleybus Society, TBS 21 would become the last ever single-deck trolleybus to operate on a public highway in Britain. To accommodate yet another one-way traffic scheme, the terminal arrangements for the Ely routes were reversed. Since their inauguration, the 10 A's and B's had looped by way of Park, Havelock and Westgate streets. However, as from the 26th of November 1967, they now came right down Westgate Street to turn towards a new loading point outside the Thompson newspaper offices on the west side of Havelock Street.
In the same area, other minor alterations were made to provide access to the one-way loop round the central bus station, which was still needed for depot journeys. The 8 was killed off by roadworks as and from the 18th of February 1968. Over the years, Newport Road had been gradually widened, which had involved re-siting virtually every traction pole and re-stringing most of the overhead. Now, as part of a major widening scheme, Royal Oak Roundabout was set to disappear. So rather than invest in new turning facilities, the corporation opted to convert the eight, although the circle remained energised for occasional use, until dismantled several months later. Reflecting high demand, especially during the 1950s, three routes had followed the trunk wiring linking the East End to Victoria Park. The 2A from Pengam, the 8 from Royal Oak and the 5 from Windsor Lane. Two seven three turns off the new one-way wiring before dipping under the Queen Street bridges. The three and a half mile eight was the last purely cross-town trolleybus route. Here, an eastbound vehicle passes the castle before turning onto the new link road, which will take it past City Hall. Since 1948, trolleybuses had used existing islands at Victoria Park, but the turns were hampered by being made against the normal traffic flow. Next to go were routes one and three. These had also been the last pair of tram routes. Following an enthusiast tour on the 28th of April 1968, all wiring to and from Butte Monument and north of City Road Junction was abandoned, leaving the depot. passing under the Queen Street railway bridges, which carried trains to and from the docks and Cardiff General. Turning from Queen Street onto the unidirectional wiring leading down to the monument. A new one-way traffic scheme in the monument area had hastened the demise of both routes. The one and the three were the last trolleybuses to load in St Mary Street. Castle Street Junction. At the Newport Road City Road Junction, approximately one ton of metal was suspended above the carriageway as a non-stop stream of trolleys negotiated the complex spider's web of frogs and crossings. At Albany Road, the threes diverged towards Rose Park. showing a turn of speed along residential Ninian Road.
On arrival at the terminus, the trolleybuses turned on the former tram loop. The bridge in the background carried the Roth branch of the Taft Vale Railway. From the junction with the threes, the ones travel for the one and a half miles to their terminus at Gabalva, some three and a half miles from St Mary's Street. A replacement bus leaves the St Mark's Avenue terminus built in 1961, following demolition of two private houses and the relocation of the local church. In this atmospheric scene, a group of trolleys heading to the depot wait in the evening gloom whilst a trio of city-bound vehicles click sedately through the mesh of wiring at the statutory five miles an hour. Looking at these slow-moving vehicles, it is hard to believe that Cardiff may hold the speed record for a British trolleybus. Early one morning, the fitter, Graham Jones, reputedly clocked up 72 miles an hour between this junction and Roth Court. As he brought his electric charge to a halt, he claimed it was like stopping a stampeding horse. These closures release the last of the 1950 batch of BUTs for scrap. Now just the Ely routes remained, together with some two miles of depot-only wiring. Initially, 19 trolleys were left to cover 14 duties, but in peak hours, buses were often needed to cover for failed trolley buses. Some workings leaving Victoria Park for the depot would still show eight. Amazingly, the overhead linesmen were kept busy. Between January and September 1969, the depot-only wiring between Royal Oak and Roth Court was realigned. The roundabout at Royal Oak was removed and replaced by traffic lights. Although all other traffic was barred, the trolleybuses, due to the lack of any diversionary wiring, continued using Westgate Street when international rugby matches were played at nearby Arms Park. These views were filmed on the 12th of April, 1969. The following day, Maidstone No. 56, a 1944 Sunbeam with a 1960 row body, toured the system. On April Fool's Day 1969, cracks were discovered in the bridge over the River Ely. This reduced the four-lane highway to two. To relieve the resulting congestion, three temporary Bailey bridges were erected. On Sunday the 29th of June, the Ely routes were bus operated to allow for alterations to the wiring, which was considerably offset from its original position. When the third Bailey Bridge was opened, the trolleybuses used the two outer bridges, leaving the middle one to soak up the pressure during peak hours. On the 7th of September 1969, Bournemouth No. 246, a 1950 BUT, joined the list of foreign visitors. Trolleybus systems everywhere were folding, Bournemouth having closed in April.
Another of their vehicles, number 202 of 1935, made two tours of Cardiff in October 1969. The open top deck providing an ideal vantage point for filming the overhead. An example next of Cardiff's interlaced wiring. By the end, the wiring was in pretty poor shape. So much so that a tar wagon had to be permanently stationed at the junction of Cowbridge Road and Grand Avenue during peak hours. Conductors pulled a hand-operated frog to take vehicles coming from the depot into Westgate Street. The final closure became an on-off affair various dates coming and going until finally regular service ceased abruptly on Wednesday the 3rd of December following a dispute at Roth Works, by which time the remaining 10 trolleybuses were only on Mondays to Fridays. Four of the 1948 former dual door BUTs were still active. Havelock Street. Cardiff Bridge. Sometime earlier, a trio of trolleys trundle under the railway bridge on Cowbridge Road. Although the vehicles looked increasingly shabby, they were still kept in sound mechanical order. the junction of Cowbridge Road and Grand Avenue. It was difficult to realise that the Ely routes had only been in existence for 15 years. On the steeply graded half mile of unidirectional wiring serving the housing development on Green Farm Road. 286 would be the last trolleybus in regular service on the 3rd of December. Despite the premature closure, it was agreed to hold various celebrations prior to the official last day on the 11th of January. A commemorative brochure was published and all operating arrangements were put in the hands of Peter Lapine Smith, who acted on behalf of the various trolleybus societies. The star attraction was to be number 262, then owned by the Cardiff Trolleybus Society. Hired back to the transport department, between the 5th and 10th of January, with Lapine Smith at the wheel, it ran a special round trip from the General Station to Victoria Park. then across town to Roth Depot and so back to the station. Included was an intermediate stop at a small exhibition at Roth Library. Special tickets were available covering the events of the final week. and another souvenir ticket was issued on the Friday and Saturday when a limited public service was offered between Havelock Street and Victoria Park. The end came on a wet Sunday, the 11th of January. 
After working various shuttles between the city and Victoria Park, the three operating trolleybuses, 215, 277 and 262, were all towed over Ely Bridge and put on the wires, resulting in a notable voltage drop in the area. Originally planned to be served by a reserve track tramway, these western routes had only been opened less than 15 years. Now the last trolleybus extensions in Wales were about to bow out. The end came when 262 was towed back across the river. At 4pm the final trio left Victoria Park in procession. In the lead was 215, followed by 277, driven by Mike Russell, and bringing up the rear 262 with Lupine Smith at the wheel. In contrast to the thousands who had witnessed the passing of the trams just 20 years earlier, only a handful of spectators bothered to watch Britain's last three-axle trolleybuses wend their way into oblivion. At the depot, the assembled enthusiasts resigned themselves to the loss of yet another trolleybus system. Within minutes, the power would be switched off, ending 68 years of electric street traction. All that remained was to remove the overhead and the majority of the traction poles. The dubious honour of cutting the final piece of wiring on the 21st of June 1970 would fall to wiring enthusiast Paul Creswell. The trolleybuses were well and truly finished. Trams, however, returned, albeit on a small scale, in 1973 with opening of the 18-inch gauge line built by a local engineering society on land near Heath Junction. Incorporating cut-down controllers off a proper Cardiff tram, this open car had been designed by Felix Canuda. Since 1987, a much enlarged operation has been recited at Heath Park. Except for a few telltale poles, little today remains of the tram and trolleybus era. However, the Cardiff and South Wales Trolleybus Project own three trolleybuses, including two former Cardiff vehicles. This one, 215, is owned by the National Museum of Wales. It retains its dual staircases, but has its front door panelled over. Cardiff 262 is owned by the Cardiff and South Wales Trolleybus Project. This, the city's last trolleybus to run, has a locally assembled body built in 1949 and is awaiting restoration. As is 243 of 1955. This was the last single-decker trolleybus to be built in Britain. The group also have an absorbing collection of tram and trolleybus memorabilia. It is hoped that one day it may be possible to once again ride on one of these swift, silent and efficient vehicles, which only managed to serve Cardiff for under 28 years. They deserved better. Some of the proceeds from the sale of this video will go towards the realisation of this dream.